so we are discussing here how the place the gita starts with a conversation where the question is that this is happening on a sacred place dharmakshetra and does that sacred place influence people does it make them any of them change the course their course of action so the previous verses indicated so till the fourth text which we have discussed so 1 to 4 the point was indicated one was the starting question and the next three verses indicated that duryodhan was still his same old self the nature his his nature was seemed to be far stronger than the place the influence of the place mm -hmm. and now he is to boost the morale of his soul force troops he is going to do a comparative assessment that will go on till the 10th text hmm a comp he is ass assessing the forces he starts with the forces on the opposite side and he says that yeah there are there are bhima and arjuna are the key figures but there are many others also who are who are powerful over there so one way you could read his statements is he is alerting his troops that don't take the opponents lightly they are they are tough people so he let's start from the fifth text now so there are also great heroic powerful fighters like drishtaketu chekitana kashiraja purujit kuntibhoja and shaibya there are the mighty yudhamanyu the very powerful uttamauja the son of subhadra and the sons of dropadi all these warriors are great chariot fighters in text 5 uh, and 6 he continues and he's giving a list of characters and he's telling that these characters are all great warriors so if we consider the the forces of the pandavas and the kauravas uh, he is now duryodhan is here and he is viewing the forces and he is giving a list so there th those forces there he lists from 4 to 6 and he is talking about various important characters now these the list of names how important is it it depends on how we are approaching the book the bo the book can be um approach from a historical perspective or a philosophical perspective so as we know the gita is a is one part of a vast book called the mahabharat so for those who are reading the big book for them these characters are often familiar if not familiar at least they are relevant okay all these big warriors are there now uh, now from the historical perspective it's important Uh, but from the philosophical perspective it is not so important we could go into the histories of each of these characters and the mahabharat sometimes describes the valor or the uh, the character of these characters but the point over here, here is this is starting that epic is starting with grounding in real life situations that the list of names in one sense is describing that uh, this is a real life dilemma and uh, a real life situation so in one sense from even from the philosophical perspective i may say it's not so important but still it is it is useful why useful because it is depicting a real life situation which will eventually turn into a real life dilemma and the gita will be answering this so just like when we are describing a situation the if a if somebody is describing a conversation that we had somewhere you know if i want to make it more vivid give more details that's how these details are being given over here so in one sense so he like you said i like the phrase he told drona man up now he's telling others you also have to you also have to be ready because they are so drona he he doesn't have any suspicion about the others loyalty but still he wants to prepare them they are they are 
those guys are tough the tough fighters so you have to also be ready right here is your rival son so you should be ready to fight but here don't take them uh, don't be complacent don't think that because our numbers are more this is going to be a cake walk so now he is a little apprehensive did he go overboard because he is saying that oh they are tough people many of them are as good as bhima and arjuna toughest among them so he is thinking hey maybe i want to make, i want to make sure that they are fully alert but they shouldn't get overwhelmed so now he will turn to his own side he will look at his own side it's like you know from, he is looking at all of them and he will tell about the warriors on his own side and he will praise them commend them saying that we are also we are also tough we are also powerful so let's look at the this is now so from the seventh text he is saying but for your information o best of the brahmanas let me tell you about the pa- captains who are especially qualified to lead my military force so in one sense he still speaking to drona drona generally when we are talking with someone we may want others to hear but politeness means that we just we don't just stop talking with that person and start talking with others so he still speaking to him and he says i am not rattled and i am not shaken i am confident so just for your information i'll tell about my leaders and then he speaks there are personalities like you bhishma karana krupa ashwatthama vikarna and the son of somdatta called bhurishrava who are always victorious in battle so he's giving a list of warriors on his own side now it's interesting he is mentioning one particular character over here karana among the if we consider among the kauravas see sometimes when there is a say there is a football match or a cricket match it's a team sports then say two teams may be playing say, but say right uh, when say in, in india there's a big rivalry between india and pakistan in cricket there might be something so there might be two teams which are playing so there is a team match up so this team is good that team is good but within that team match up there may be particular players match up also you know okay you know this batter and this bowler you know who will get the upper hand so like that there are smaller match ups also so specifically there is rivalry like i mentioned earlier between bhima on the other side and drona i'm sorry and duryodhana on this side so both of them are mace fighters mace mace or club it's a weapon they like mm. use a club to fight so the club and mace are synonyms and then there are there is there are prime archers on the opposite side there is arjuna and on his side there is karna but an interesting point over here is that karna is actually not on the battlefield hmm although he is not on the battlefield he is in the mind of duryodhan so through these verses actually his psychology is also being depicted that uh, the question which we had mentioned earlier that did the place affect him so i concluded the last session by saying that the place and the, the the sanctity of the place did not affect him much so normally the sanctity of the place would affect us at the level of the mind so his psychology is being revealed now karna had felt slighted karna was a for- formidable archer but um, when the commander was bhishma bhishma was the senior most both in age and in experience and he was the commander 
So when Bhishma had earlier done an assessment of the two forces, he had said that Karana is not that big a warrior. Mm -hmm. So now his purpose in he had to some extent undervalued Karana. Now he had done that primarily to try to decrease the hubris of Duryodhan. Duryodhan counted on Karana. You know, I will defeat Bhima and Karana will defeat Arjuna. So Bhima had undervalued Karana because, sorry, Bhishma had undervalued Karana. But when this had happened, Karana had felt slighted. And he had said, I am not going to fight as long as Bhishma is the commander. Because if I fight and I win, I bring victory, the credit will go to him. So he refuses to give me credit. Why should I give credit? Why should I do something that will give credit to him? So it's like some, it, it will become like an ego issue. In a, like the, and I know in an Indian cricket team, there was uh, one particular batsman, quite a very, very good batsman, but he didn't do very well with another rival batsman who became the captain. And when that player became the captain, this, this batsman said, I will not play in the team as long as he's the captain. Which was, you know, he thought that he's doing that so that they will not give the captaincy to him. But they anyway gave the captaincy to him. And then he had to meekly submit and he participated. But um, in this case, Karana had said, I will stand out or I'll sit out. So although Karana is not there on the battlefield, still he's very much there in the mind. This chapter is called Observing the Battlefield. Hmm? So when he's observing the battlefield, Duryodhan, he is, he is seeing, seeing in the sense of stating, seeing the absent. Somebody is absent, he's seeing them. Why is that? Because he counts them as very important. That person is a valuable ally, ally for me, and he's there with me. So that's why he is pointing out, mentioning his name, although he is not there. So basically, through this, his what is psychology that is revealed? That is his his resolve to fight. That is being revealed. That he has had no second thoughts about fighting, because even when somebody is not there on the battlefield, he say, "Yeah, he's going to come soon, and he'll be there here, and he'll fight for me." So mm -hmm. I know he is here. He is not uh, weakened by the absence of Karana. He's thinking, "No, he's there. He's there." Like a substitute fielder may not be there right now on the field, but he will come eventually. This is especially significant. Why? What it tells about psychology? That will be uh, revealed a little bit more. Yeah, sometimes some people are, uh, it's like, this. Will, we will discuss about the conception of the self in the Bhagavad Gita as we come to it eventually. But it's like, suppose somebody is an alcoholic, but they are, they are more like social drinkers. You put them in a different circle, they forget about drinking. But some people are just not social drinkers, they are drinking addicts. You put them in a company where nobody is drinking and they will be just craving for a drink. So basically, his evil nature is so deep-rooted, so strong, that it is unaffected by the place. And just like, example, alcoholic. Mm, craving for a drink. Even in a even among teetotalers, non-drinkers. Even if he's among non-drinkers, he's still thinking. So that it reveals his psychology, basically. He's adamant. Mm -hmm. So I'll just read the next verse, and then I'll make a comment, and then we'll stop for today. In nine text, he says, there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and all are experienced in military science. So 
here he is reassuring his forces by saying that they are all dedicated to my cause so in one sense he is continuing his strategy of okay is compared the pandavas and the kauravas so his his forces and the other forces so if you consider a weighing balance so who is uh, who is stronger so he is going to give that assessment in the next verse but he is listing that these people are also dedicated there are many others and they are so dedicated that they are ready to lay down their life for me but he, by this point the list gets completed and he will give the assessment his assessment about who is stronger in the next verse and the 10th verse will answer this but the next verse answer but before that let's make one point over here i said that he is seeing the absent but he is not seeing the present so he is seeing the absent that is he is seeing karna but he is not seeing the present that is krishna so krishna is there on the opposite side and krishna is very prominently present he mentions bhima and arjuna in the right in the first verse so krishna is we'll talk about krishna more later but he is god descended to this world that's what the gita tells us and it will be revealed it has already been told in the mahabharat but he is definitely a very powerful person but he has chosen to be a non combatant we'll talk about why is a non combatant later but duryodhan's his calculation is so materialistic and gross that he thinks just because somebody is a non combatant he is a non entity he is inconsequential he is going to make no difference so mm -hmm. somebody can be like somebody may be a not be a great player but that person could be a great great advisor great counselor great guide and duryodhan completely devalues him devalues him to such an extent that he doesn't even mention krishna that also shows his psychology that again that also if he knew how powerful krishna was and at least that would have got some cautionary note so his at one level if we can we can say that this refers to his godlessness uh, because he is neglecting god completely or even if he says i don't really believe krishna is god and still his gross materialism where he doesn't even consider anything beyond uh, numerical factors or the physical fighting see there is the like sports is not just a physical encounter it's also a mental encounter it's a mental game so like that the in the mental game krishna is going to play a very significant role but in the hmm. mind the that inner aspect he completely neglects and that also is an indication of because he's not thinking about the subtler the internal that's why the place also doesn't affect him in much so we'll continue our next session thank you so much